It's the wound condition. What does that mean? We can stay. Alex, come on, stay close. Camp here? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Malcolm. Malcolm. See ya. As I said, the thing that was really important to me you know, when I first came in and pitched for the movie was that we we start in the ape world. I, I wanted it to be almost like a, like a silent movie where we were just um, getting into the sort of intimate family life of the apes and we see Caesar's new son being born and 
one of the things that I thought would be really exciting that Mark Bombeck and I came up with was the idea of this kind of um, tribal ceremony that would be uh, kind of very majestic and organized and would show uh, really the continuing development and evolution of the apes. And it was a sequence that uh, we thought was really, really cool. Actually, Michael Giacchino had suggested this particular rhythmic signature, which we had on the set playing back. All of the um, actors were pounding on uh, their, the ground and on, the, on their chests and on logs and things to do this kind of rhythmic tribute. And then there would be this moment, which we thought was very important, which was uh, kind of cementing the brotherhood between Koba and Caesar. But when we actually uh, were doing the movie, the, the narrative got a little lost here, and the audience didn't know where the story was going, even though the scene seemed to play very well. Uh, the next scene didn't play so well, and so unfortunately, it was one of the, was the, one of the scenes I had to lose. And this, of course, is the scene that we go to instead. The crazy thing about making a movie like this on this kind of schedule is you turn over all of these shots and a lot of work gets done, and then you suddenly realize, oh, <laughs> we don't need that scene after thousands and thousands of dollars have been spent. So this part actually is in the film, but this next sequence uh, is not, which is as he's uh, walking forward here, you know, in the script, we thought it'd be a really fun idea that he kind of jumps off and you think, oh my gosh, where is he gone? And that that would be the revelation of the dam. But we realized that uh, in editorial, when you saw the story, you already knew that Malcolm was going to the dam because that's all he'd been talking about. And so there was no real mystery to this part of the story. And so uh, we shot it, and we thought it would be a fun reveal. And then in the course of the story, it just felt repetitive. So uh, it's one of those examples where we went through a lot of effort. We did all uh, sort of level of effects here. This sequence is finished, but it, uh, it didn't even make it in the movie because it wasn't necessary. And it's still in condition. What does that mean? This is um, one of the scenes that we cut that, again, like the tribal scene, uh, makes me very sad because there's something about this scene and that scene that I like very much. But in the narrative, it just really seemed to uh, bog things down. But I felt like this moment here was like out of a kind of a classic Western. You know, we were shooting it and uh, we were on Andy's back. And um, it just seemed like, oh, the one moment where these two characters, after all of this craziness, sort of introduce each other and um, sort of set into motion the fact that this this whole question of peace is gonna flow through the two of them. So he introduces himself and Malcolm's trying to talk to him like there's no way he could understand him and then it's clear he understands him. It's like, yeah, Caesar, I'm a badass. <laughs> and then he rides off, which I just loved. But uh, unfortunately, we uh, we just didn't need it. <laughs> 